Strange things can happen in the mountain air. Last year, Air Force found the right altitude to fly by TCU when one costly turnover brought one dramatic conclusion. Today, Falcon QB Tim Jefferson is the smooth operator gunning for a repeat. Confident that to make it so, Jake Paulson will defend to the bitter end against the Horned Frogs, who wore a frown at Utah, but can still share the Mountain West crown with Jerry Hughes out to seek and destroy on Versus. Moms and dads are proud on senior day. Today, the Falcons put the finish on the Mountain West Conference schedule here in Fort Worth, where the 17th ranked Horn Frogs shoot for 10 wins with college football on versus. If TCU gets a little help from BYU, they can make it a three way split of the title only if they ground Air Force. It's just great to have you with us. Along with Glenn Parker, I'm Joe Beninati. Tim Neverett joins us soon. We know that Air Force loves to run the football. Glenn, they're falling in love with two freshmen who do it well. Well, that's right. First off, they inserted Tim Jefferson at quarterback. This guy's a little more sudden at the position than Shea Smith was. He gives him a little more speed, a little more explosiveness. And you know what? Besides running the ball, he can make the throws he has to make. There aren't many of them out there. They also put in another freshman, a guy by the name of Asher Clark. This guy, again, it's about speed and suddenness, and that's what they needed on an offense to get that ball rolling. On defense, we know that the Falcons have quite a few playmakers. Well, it starts with Jake Paulson up front. The guy is always around the ball, and when you talk safety, you have to talk Chris Thomas. He's the quarterback on defense. He's the leader on defense. It's what they do on defense is those two guys. TCU receives and deserves a lot of accolades for its work on defense, but quarterback Andy Dalton and the offense need some attention with their near record-setting numbers. Well, Andy Dalton's really matured in the position of quarterback for them. Uh, a little bit of a rough start last year, and he has just come on so strong. He's got a great weapon in Jimmy Young. The guy's got great hands, very good route running. He's explosive, and he will make his mark felt today. On the other side of the football, Jerry Hughes is getting national acclaim. Well, he should get national acclaim. The guy plays with such good leverage. Jerry Hughes has got a motor. He doesn't give up. So he's coming off the edge. He's got a motor. He makes his entire defense look good that way. And such a turnover threat. Last year's meeting, an overtime thriller for Air Force. TCU's Jason Phillips remembers it all too well. I think back how I felt walking off the Air Force field. It's a terrible feeling, and it's not something that I want to forget because, you know, it's that feeling that motivates me and all the rest of our team to work hard. But, yeah, it's not something that we accept. It's not something that we like, and it's not something that we're uh, willing to let happen again. Here at Amon G. Carter Stadium, where TCU has won 49 of its last 55, and they're ready for this one today as we go down to the field to check out the Under Armour Click Clack Cam. The last sound you hear before you step on the field. Click Clack. I think the air is coming. And in a ceremony today, the seniors spending their last football day here at Carter Stadium, honored with their parents and an appreciative crowd here in Fort Worth for all of their hard work. This senior class has the chance to be one of the very best in TCU history. As we get set for the kickoff, we send you to Tim Neverett. He's got Gary Patterson standing by. All right, Joe, thanks. Coach, you need a little help to win a share of the conference title, but you've had 16 days to get ready for this one. How are you prepared for this game? Well, hopefully good. You know, our kids are fired up. It's senior day. You know, get a chance to win 40 ball games, tied all-time winning a team in uh, school history. And, uh, you know, for our kids, I'm excited. These seniors mean a lot to me, and it means a lot to this town. So uh, hopefully we play real well today. Coach, thanks. Best of luck. You bet. All right, that's Gary Patterson, head coach of TCU, getting set for the opening kickoff. Joe, let's send it back up to you and Glenn. Tim, thank you. Troy Calhoun says he's never seen a squad improve as much as his Falcons have this year. They come into this battle with their own impressive mark. And although it is TCU in the purple with Aaron Brown, still the only chance to get a little sliver of a Mountain West Conference title. Ryan Harrison will hit it. A lone knuckler that curls out of bounds at the two. 
Andy Dalton leads the way offensively for TCU. The sophomore from Katy, Texas, has been explosive in the last month. Great reads and pretty touchdown passes are going hand in hand for him. He'll need to diagnose the Falcons' intricate zone blitz activity today. That's got to be high on his priority list. Well, it really is. He's got to find those voids. When they zone blitz, there will be somewhere back there, a hole somewhere on the defense that will open up. It's going to change every play, so he's got to diagnose it and find it. At the beginning of the year, he was running the football especially well. And of late, he's been slinging it for a high-powered TCU offense that gets its first touch right here. Starting from its own 40, off of play action, complete to the tight end, Reagan, who brings it inside of Air Force territory. These are the Wrangler lineups. Brown has a great burst. Young is very dangerous. Bryant's senior year has been encouraging. Johnson's dependable, and Reagan's a real good outlet. The veteran O-line makes him go. Newhouse and Cannon are monsters at the tackle spot. Phillips is back in the starting lineup. Schluter and Montgomery have been cornerstones for this team. After the first down pickup, they'll sling it out there for Christian. Very elusive runner brought down by Brandon Reeves. Air Force on D, it's a three-man front. Paulson will hunt you down. Garland's a team player. Kemp will stir it up. Four backers. Altman's the prankster. Moore's really fast. Lamandola and Morris are sophomores with great futures. On the corners, Wright and Rember try to blanket you. Thomas could be their most valuable guy. And Kirkhoff uses his head to make big plays. Joseph Turner is in the backfield. And the power running back comes straight ahead. Shredding tacklers. Down to the 30, he picks up a gain of eight, where number eight, Reggie Rembert, tripped him up. Well, right off the bat, you get a bad kick, goes out of bounds, and that gives up field position. And what does TCU do? They come out with the spread offense. First, hit your tight end. Second, a little screen out to the wide receiver. What that does is spread that defense, and their third play, power run. So you can see exactly right away what Mike Schultz wants to do, spread them out and then run against them. On second and short. Dalton with all day. Has his man inside the 10. Jimmy Young has been the primary target. A pickup of 25 as Young turned Rembert inside out. Well, what you're going to see is just a, it's, a, it's a deep out route. He's going to come up. He's going to push, push, and then one move and back outside. When he does that, it's very easy. Andy Dalton, there's a lot of real estate for Andy Dalton to place that ball into. Rembert, very tough on the coverage there. It's when you're all alone against a guy like, a guy like Young and there's that much real estate, it's tough to defend. Watch out for Joseph Turner now. He leads TCU with 10 TDs. He powers this one off tackle left and gets undercut after a short game. A little pushing and shoving after the play, too. Blake Schluter just getting himself reacquainted with the Falcons. When this team brings it into the red zone, they have been very, very efficient. They've been efficient as you look at their 88 percent, but the 39 touchdowns is what's so impressive. But if, again, Gary Patterson and his team, they you get a lead against a team like Air Force who doesn't throw the ball particularly well or, or much. And all of a sudden you put a lot of pressure on. Bang it straight ahead. Touchdown. A three yard close. They gave it to Luke Shivers, the redshirt freshman, a converted linebacker, and he slammed home. Good push using big guys. You see a purple wave come at you there. I mean, you've got Giles Montgomery leading the way and then a, a big back. Good job by TCU just using leverage. Ross Evans for the point after. As he knocks it through, it's 7-0 early for TCU. Shivers picks up his second touchdown. And TCU wastes no time in Fort Worth. Little fullback dive to Pater with college football on versus. College Football on Versus is brought to you by Under Armour Performance Trainers, the first performance training footwear at the Sports Authority. You put on a spread like this for a tailgate, I imagine what they would do for Thanksgiving coming up. <laughs> My goodness. Uh, they know what they're doing. That's what you like. Serious barbecue around Texas. TCU didn't waste long to get on the board. Remember, they were off to a flying start in their loss to Utah. Then they went cold for a few quarters. Drew Combs hits this one. Air Force in white. Rembert 
hopping across the 30. Give him a return of 10, and Air Force will get its first touch on the day. Quarterback scheme for these Falcons. It's been such a focal point through the years, and this is freshman Tim Jefferson from Atlanta, who's warmed up nicely to the starting role. Only the fourth freshman ever to start at quarterback at Air Force. His running ability is what's in the spotlight, but it's his throwing ability that can catch people off guard. Asher Clark is with him in the tailback spot. Half it in motion, they run Clark straight ahead, right into the teeth of that TCU defense. Wrangler starting lineups, backs and receivers for Air Force. Clark is another talented pup. Newell's their leading rusher. Paffitt and Cousins are battlers. And Decker's a big play threat at tight end. The O-line are masters of the cut block. Charles is all-conference caliber. Pipes never gives up. And Wallerstein is a freshman who's in there due to injury. Another short gain. Robert Henson had to be looking forward to this day. Front four is dynamite for TCU. Uses special. More invests. Eat blockers up. Panthers a ball of energy. Classy seniors Henson and Phillips get rave reviews. And in the secondary, Sanders and Priest on the corners have had their jobs for years. Johnson, Hodge, Coleman make you pay if you're not careful from their safety spots. On third down and five. The option pitch beautifully executed. For first down pickup. Paffitt running efficiently. Coleman drove him out after a gain of seven. Well, and what you're seeing now, we talked about TCU's offense, what they were trying to do. Air Force with a little bit of a speed up, no huddle going here. They're going to snap the ball fast. Really, no way to simulate the speed with which Air Force executes all that option. Well, that's one of the difficult things in any, any team. I don't care who, who it is you play, but particularly an offense you don't see much, is anticipating where they're going to be, trying to get to where they're going to be at. Out of the eye, they stay with the fullback, and that has been a, a very productive spot. Panfield making the tackle there. With respect to TCU, these rankings, they are all number one in the country. Well, uh, the first one leads to the, the third one. If you can stop the run, teams are going to have to pass, and they're going to be in trouble, and you can get sacks on them, and that's what they're doing very, very well. It all starts with stopping the run. The sack master is 98. Out of the gun, Jefferson runs the option. The pitch for Halderman, and he is tracked down swiftly. Nick Sanders up from his corner spot to turn the play back in. Well, Air Force wants to come out. They've run a, a couple of midlines or, or, or fullback dives and then trying to use speed on the outside. But speed is tough to win with against TCU. Look at the pursuit here on this play. Guys from inside out, every defender from inside out tracking that ball. Coach Calhoun was quoted during the week as saying when he watches TCU, it looks like he's looking at an NFL team with their speed on defense. Jefferson rides the fullback straight ahead. Both Todd Newell and Jared, too, have been giving the Falcons good play from that fullback spot. Hughes comes off the pile with another tackle. What you see, the problem for Air Force right there when you're in third and eight, they don't have a lot of answers at third and eight. They want to get to third and one or two where they can run the ball. So they run a little bit of that midline dive. Now they're punting, but give them credit. They won the field position battle with a little bit of a short kickoff. They get to midfield. Now they can punt TCU back and make them come the long field. Glenn, we don't anticipate seeing a lot of Jeremy Curley today. So Nick Sanders is back to receive this punt. He traps it at the 17, and then he's knocked back. TCU on top by seven, and we check out the Tom Tom team travel log. The all-time series history between these two sides. Not a lot of meetings, Glenn, but TCU has the upper hand. Yeah, you say not a lot of meetings. Obviously, Air Force is a fairly young team compared to TCU, but how about Air Force traveling 725 miles here? If they did it in those fighter jets, they got here pretty fast. I was gonna say they did it in style. Yeah, they, they did, they did. It right. High octane. TCU already on the board with a Luke Shivers touchdown plunge off the first series, capping a 60-yard drive. Andy Dalton giving the Falcons a little bit of their own medicine with the option. And the fleet-footed Aaron Brown sprints for 12. Aaron Brown, who missed the first three games of the season, suspended for violating team policy. It's tailback by committee here in Fort Worth. They, they, well, they've Every guy kind of gives them a little something, whether it's whether it's a Turner, it's a Christian, it's a Brown, it's a Watts. Every guy has his own little bit of specialty. But 
Also, you got to watch the wide receivers. They do a great job blocking for TCU. Evan Frosch is the man in motion. Another running play for Brown. Lamandola, who's coming off of a big tackle game a week ago, teaming up with Justin Moore to track down Brown. Now, if you're Mike Schultz, the offensive coordinator at TZ, you have to love that. You just got five yards on first down. Your playbook looks huge at this point. You, can, you have a lot of things you can choose from now. That's exactly what he was talking about yesterday, being effective on first down situations. Dalton on the pitch. Brown has the corner near midfield before he's taken out of bounds. It was Chris Thomas, the all-everything for Air Force, that made the stop. The kind of player who's instantly going to grab your eye's attention. Well, it is, and, and Andy Dalton doesn't really want to keep the ball because his option right there really might be to take that ball and keep it and run north and south, but he gets rid of it. Good job out there, Aaron Brown running on the side. But again, they've just won field position, and they've, they've dictated now what, to Air Force what they want to do. Fewer hits Dalton can take the better. Remember, he had a knee injured earlier in the season against Oklahoma. Which surprises me, then, that, they were, that they're using the option so far as much as they have, uh, two or three times already. Gary Patterson figured that his seniors would play inspired football today, and it's a senior class that means so much to him. And as well it should, you know, the, the possibility of 40 wins. Guys have just fought for him game in and game out the last four years. And uh, they've done some special things there. As you take a look right there, 39 and 10. That's the best since the 32 through 35 class. That goes back quite a ways. Just fantastic. And the chance, should they win today and should they win their bowl game, to eclipse that mark and be the, uh, the winningest senior class of all. Air Force and TCU. Falcons going up against ranked teams back-to-back -back weeks. Troy Calhoun's bunch falling to BYU most recently and then having to come here to Fort Worth to tangle with TCU while the Horn Frogs still have a shot at a Mountain West Conference title. Yeah, and I think if you're Air Force, you're thinking to yourself, we, we, we battled BYU and gave them everything they could handle. Now we've got to go on the road against a great TCU team that's playing inspired, not only because it's the seniors' last home game, but it's also a chance to get into that title pick. You, you start thinking to yourself, maybe we should change our scheduling a little bit. <laughs> the Falcons in the white jerseys. TCU second best when it comes to scoring offense in the conference. Already on top by one touch. Andy Dalton on a short drop. Oh, what a catch there. A one-handed stab by Antoine Hicks. Give him nine. Hunter Altman brought him to the earth. Check that man for Stickham. He's got Velcro on his hands. Uh, unbelievable. Really, really athletic play, number one. And, you know, when you when you talk a look, take a look, there's going to be pressure coming off the right side. That's where the void opens up. See, that's a, that's a another linebacker trying to get out and helping coverage because you came off the edge. And then you add into it an incredible athletic play and a whole bunch of desire to get those extra yards. Dalton sends Christian in motion. Dalton already four for four today. He'll tuck it down, and he got tripped up in the backfield. Ryan Kemp got a chunk of him, this 22-year-old senior from Oklahoma. Well, four guys rushing. They run a little bit of a stunt inside. And that gets pressure on the quarterback. But where you have to credit then is coverage, because there was some time there. Coverage stopped him. Ryan Kemp swipes him with a big old paw and knocks him down. They say Ryan Kemp's the poster boy for the program, kind of guy who says we'll outwork you and if you're not careful we will outsmart you that's why they rack up the win totals they do third down and short for the horn frogs over the middle complete big tight end opens up and reagan slashes his way inside the 25 aaron kirkhoff had to come over to make the play after a pickup of 21 well, single safety, Aaron Kirkhoff is deep, but he's got two people over there, so he's only watching one. You run, a, you run the out with the tight end, he's too fast for that linebacker covering him, and Kirkhoff can't get up there in time, and that's where you're getting all those big yards. Not, there's not enough time for Kirkhoff to get up there to stop the pass from being completed. Glenn, a season ago, Reagan averaged almost 18 yards per catch. That was number one for TCU. The Horn Fogs already with a half dozen first downs. Flare it out. 
Dalton seeing Antoine Hicks, who's getting more and more of a prime opportunity as a feature performer in this offense with Curly Ailing. Thomas adds to his tackle totals, and all Thomas did last week was make a career best 17 against the BYU Cougars. Yeah, well, you can throw it out there, and great blocking by Bart Johnson and Alonzo Adams out there to, to, to spring him. If you're, when you're holding your blocks that long, and you can obviously, you can get your six or eight yards before you're touched by the safety. Two tight ends set. Things are clicking. Nice tempo here for TCU. Aaron Brown sidestepping one and shimmying his way to the 11. Kirkoff, 23-year-old well, senior, made the stop. Great vision by Aaron Brown. They're gonna they pull the offside guard. He comes pulling out and and rather than get a blow block, he logs. Aaron Brown makes a great read to go, jump back under and grab two or three extra yards. We talked to Gary Patterson yesterday. He said the reasons behind TCU's improved offense. The best O-line play he's seen in three years. Well, that, that speaks a lot, and he did talk to us just how good some of those guys are, Richmond and Cannon and, and some of the others out there. Perfect numbers for Dalton so far as they run the option, and it's destroyed by Chris Thomas. He sniffed it out in a hurry, a loss of four. Well, we talked about Chris Thomas being a leader, and, and when you're a safety, and you, you can spot it. It's like he knew that one was coming. He was in their playbook that time. 26 straight starts for Chris Thomas. And that jersey is only going to get dirtier and dirtier throughout the day. Dalton off the play action. On the corner route, off the hands. Off the hands of his favorite target, Jimmy Young, who's blaming himself for missing that one. Well, that was a really nice throw by Andy Dalton. He put it the only place it could be. There was real estate for Jimmy Young to get into and make that catch. Shows you, shows you how delicate the balance is, though, between being wide open and catching that ball. Dalton set a completion percentage record for TCU last year. He starts today 6 of 7, and the only miss was that drop in the corner of the end zone. Third down, let's call it 14. Falcons show blitz. And come with it off the edge. That little jump shuffle pass falls incomplete. Well, he had Ryan Christian in his backfield. They brought pressure from the opposite side. Christian becomes the outlet, but not enough on that ball. One thing Troy Calhoun's squad does, they hide, they disguise, they cover their blitz as well. It's almost like they're pretty smart, like every one of them might be an engineering major of some sort in a really tough university. I see where you're going, Brett, <laughs> and you're absolutely right. Ross Evans is on for this one. An attempt of 32 yards. The hold is good, and this one is a topspin lob. That's a winner. Yeah, <laughs> he just kind of got that one through. I'll tell you what, though, if you're TCU, you're a little upset. You come away with three when you're in the red zone. You're inside that that area where you got to come away with touchdowns. Very frustrating. Chance to step away as Evans knocks this one through and gives his team the lead by ten. Okay, so don't call me crazy. It's not like it's below zero here, but it is a little bit chilly for that. Well, you know, I talked about the intelligence of the Air Force <laughs> cadets. I might uh, not say the same of the TCU fans. Uh, a little cold out there. As uh, most people are bundled up, this kick into a wind settles to Rembert at the 16. Rembert turning and twisting and brought down at the 33 after a return of 18 yards we need to step away again tcu has it all under control in the early going in fort worth college football on versus okay so it's one extreme to the other we just showed you bare chested boys in the stands and bundled up a lot more a lot more wise this time around i need i need the blanket i do too it's pretty chilly up here okay. i gotta tell you the horn frog looked like he was nice and under control, climate controlled. First down and 10 for Air Force. Trailing by 10. The fullback, Newell, they're doing a lot more fullback by design. And it's stuffed by TCU. We get you back to college football. Central on versus. Here's Ted. Well, go back to Joe, Glenn, and Tim. Ted, thanks for the Big Ten update. And the Buckeyes. Try to beat down one of their more infamous rivals. Yeah, the big Ohio State-Michigan game today. Penn State-Michigan State going on. They've got some uh, 
big games around the country. Yeah, that's for sure. We are enjoying a triple header of college football on versus today. The game, Harvard Yale, the 125th edition. Have you ever seen Harvard Stadium? No. It has a, it has a gladiator type, the movie scene set kind of feel. It's just really? an amazing place. As TCU has done it again, out to a 10 nothing advantage, something that's become commonplace for the Horn Frogs. Third down and eight. Jefferson looking to throw. Protection breaking down. This one's juggled and caught with Raphael Priest close by Josh Cousins. That's where you see the, the youth of Tim Jefferson. Knowing where the sticks were, knowing not to throw that ball, those are things that are going to come with a little age. He needs to understand, I can't make that throw. I need to either tuck this and run or look downfield more. Coaches all say that young man, Jefferson, all he really needs now is a good, solid spring camp. Learn the formations. Learn the routes. Yeah, you get a bowl game here with a few extra practices. You get a spring ball going, and, and you can really mature a, uh, uh, one of these kids quite a bit. Harrison smokes this one. Huge punt that bounds into the end zone for the touchback. Folks, versus his college football continues. It's coming up next. A Pac-10 primetime showdown. 21st ranked Oregon State looks to keep their Rose Bowl hopes intact. They take on the Arizona Wildcats versus college football. It's definitely wild out here. That'll be a very exciting game to watch. High-flying Arizona offense on an Oregon State team that just continually plays to the highest level for Mike Riley. Amazing. Here's Tim Nevert on the sideline with more on Air Force. Let's not forget these guys who are wearing the white today are going to end up being commissioned officers once they leave the Air Force Academy. One thing you never see because it's during warm-ups is the players wear these on their hips. These are flight scarves that are sent to them by former Academy cadets who are now in active duty somewhere around the world. And in August, the players will write to these guys and say, hey, I need a scarf and I want to represent you during the course of the season. So this is one of the ones that they wear. If you've ever been to an Air Force game early you've seen all the players wearing these and they put them in their lockers when they're done but it's a it's a nice tribute it was actually started by ted sunquist who is the former general manager of the denver broncos and former fullback at air force tim the school then sends out a nice bio back to the the person who contributes to one of those flying units a bio on the player who carries their scarf in the warm-up it's a tremendous tradition Andy Dalton on the keeper gets outside. Dalton diving towards the 39. Everything is clicking for TCU today. It's, it's a pickup of 17. Anthony Wright, the freshman, 20-year-old Ohio native, makes the stop. Zone read. See, he sees that defensive end crash. He keeps the ball and goes. Now he's getting a little stock block on the far outside there. Unfortunately, Aaron Brown doesn't quite know which way his quarterback's going. That's right there is the difficulty in being a blocker. You have your back to the ball. All you can do is try to adjust to the defense. Dalton worked a lot in the offseason to improve his speed, and here he comes again. Getting to the outside across the 45, and running out of bounds after a pickup of eight. Well, now you see the success the run game is now feeding on itself. Because they did well running the ball early and making that defense overcommit, now you can start running the zone with the quarterback when it does overcommit, keep the ball and you get yourself some yards. In this case, eight yards on first down. TCU almost 70 yards on the ground in this first quarter alone, which has one minute left in it. College football on versus today in Fort Worth, a Mountain West Conference showdown. A pitch and catch. Out to Walter Bryant. His senior year has been a very, very good one. The coaches are thrilled with his performance. He's been able to, to battle back after overcoming some some personal issues off the field. You know, and, and that speaks to the maturity that all kids go through in college. It's just things that happen to you in college. You're, let's face it, males between the ages of 18 and 22 might be the dumbest people on the planet. Just, Speak for yourself. Just all males at that age, let's face it, they just are. And as they mature through those college years, we start seeing those stories about kids who have they've had a rough time and they come up and they, they, they overcome. A pass completed to them. Ryan Christian, that scat back gets inside the 40-yard line. Well, I, I know where you're coming from, Glenn, because you know, I resembled that remark once. <laughs> I think we all did. Sure. That's we are. Lots of smiles on the faces of the Horn Frogs. Their offense is brimming with confidence. Mike Schultz doing a great job of, of spreading out this team and then running at him, and he's using misdirection. That's what we see with those quarterback keeps on the zone read. But Ryan Christian right there, if you can get the ball in his hands, it's pure speed for him. 
his whole thing is get the ball out to Ryan and let Matt Ryan make one person miss. And he's got himself five, eight, maybe nine yards. That graphic shows you the dominance in the first quarter, which is now complete. We'll carry on with more from Fort Worth in a moment on Versus. I'm imagining the cleanup from something like that's got to be just a sham with all that purple all over the place. But it's everywhere here at Carter Stadium. Showing their spirit on an exciting senior day. On a pump fake. Dalton going deep. Too strong. All out effort there from Chris Thomas trying to reel it in defensively for the Falcons. Well, Andy Dalton put that ball only place he could put it. Uh, the, the, the pump fake and the first move, double move by by the wide receiver didn't get it and so all they you kind of have to put it away from the safety and over the top and it's the best you can do and it shows how he's maturing as a quarterback looks like by the numbers he's got another big all-purpose day coming as his horn frogs have the advantage by 10 trying to win for the 10th time in a season for the sixth time since 2000 sprinting down the line of scrimmage no option available to him and he's dropped in one fell swoop that's going to be a loss of seven well a, a great play across the board ben garland ryan kemp uh, you look at the way they were out there the linebackers got over the top it's great pursuit watch every gap is closed to him wherever he wants to go there's someone in the gap in the backside the nose tackle actually ben garland's the guy that that closes it off so you remember on offense they're look they're looking for gaps they're looking for a hole where there's no color and on that particular play Air Force did a great job of showing color in every hole Garland dreamt of going to the Air Force Academy since he was five years old that dreams come true and he's a, a big part of their defensive front Dalton sets his feet under pressure again and he bounces that one short Ryan Kemp got right in his face Ryan Kemp is really good pressure bringing four and he, he he does a good job of getting himself up in the face of Andy Dalton and forcing the first punt of the day for, for TCU. It'll be Anson Kelton who's done a bang up job for these Horn Frogs. They've had a terrific season in all three facets. This is a tough punt from here because you've got a real wind at your back so you're trying to pull it up short without uh, shanking it or giving them a chance at a return. Reggie Rembert is deep for Air Force and he can make some things happen if you allow this one is sky high and bounding through the end zone for the touchback just now in the second minute of the second quarter our Levi's player profile features a defensive end the giant Jerry Hughes well Jerry Hughes is just amazing at 14 sacks this season he's leading the NCAA it's a record in the Mountain West Conference as you see he's a finalist for the Bronco Nagurski trophy and I'll tell you what this guy he, he, it's it's leverage it's motor he's got it all going on Glenn I say giant not necessarily because he's so big but because of these type skills well that's absolutely right it, it's it's motor it's heart and desire that he plays with but I'll tell you what great leverage and get around the corner he's got very good balance and you know what more than anything he's got a little bit of a mean streak wants to get there wants to punish the quarterback Jefferson throwing a little misdirection now at the Horn Frogs who cover it with speed huh. boy they came swarming Ty Patton Jerry Hughes we talked with the coach yesterday Gary Patterson he said no plans to leave TCU early this guy's a junior and he's getting tremendous accolades. Well, that's 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 what you'd like to hear from him. You'd like him to say, I don't want to go anywhere. But as the year progresses, as the offseason progresses, people can get in his ear. And that's what coaches have to guard against. Uh, an uncle here, an aunt here, uh, a, a mom or dad. And they start getting in his ear a little bit or a friend. Got to be careful. The sounds of a cash register in the background. Good pitch play here. Wide open spaces. Hester Clark's on his horse. Clark inside the 30. Run down by Nick Sanders. 
That's why they put Asher Clark into the lineup to turn five and six yard gains into 60. That's right, more suddenness. And I want you to watch out here. Watch the safety number four. Look at Pitt right there. Oh, that's a great block right up in front. You get you get a Ty Paffett with the block, makes the safety jump over him. Great cut by Asher Clark to get back inside and gain real estate. Fullback straight ahead after a 54 yard gain. Asher Clark, the 19-year-old freshman from Georgia. Able to find a wide open spot. There are not very many. Troy Calhoun was watching TCU's D. Well, you know what it is? It's about getting to that second level. And what they were able to do is get Ty Paffett up to the safety. And when that happened, it was a jailbreak for Asher Clark. Second and ten. Fumble high in the air and caught again. Jefferson was able to clean up his miscue, and then he got freight trained by Stephen Hodge. This is where you're, you're, you're frustrated if you're an Air Force fan. Not only, you, you get a big time game, but then you get a stop of one, and then on that exchange, that little mesh right there between the fullback and the quarterback, the ball pops up, and all of a sudden you're looking at third and ten, and you know your offense doesn't throw the ball particularly well. But we also know they surprise us sometimes too. They get noisy here at Carter Stadium. Halderman in motion. Option to Halderman. Kaboom! Well, the flag down. Sanders throws his helmet right into the chest of the ball carrier. I think they were able to. Offside on the defense, number 29. Five-yard penalty. Third down. They got Stephen Hodge a little excited over there. He jumped over. Now you've got third and five, a little more manageable for your, for your offense. Gary Patterson with a shake of the head. Well, take a look right at the top, right up here. He's going to just jump off just a little bit. He's going to get a little excited. There he is. There's the jump. That'll get you. That's five yards off that you couldn't otherwise get. Third and five now for Tim Jefferson. Deep in TCU territory. Changing the play. Barking the audible. Play clock at four. He'll throw. Jefferson on a post route nearly picked off. In and out of the hands of Raphael Priest. Great coverage by Priest. Even better coverage by Stephen Coleman getting back into the throwing lane. There was a, an area there where he was open. Watch there. He's going to come over, open over the top. Right there he's open. But now with Coleman there, that ball has to go behind Coleman. And that allows Priest to catch up on the backside to make that play. Ryan Harrison's had a wonderful year, place kicking for Air Force. 21 of 24 this year. This attempt from 36. Into the wind, spirals nice and true. 10-3 TCU. Last year in Colorado Springs, it was a thriller. In last year's early season TCU Air Force matchup, the Falcons found themselves down by 14 late in the game. Strategic play calling allowed the Falcons to climb back up to tie, but TCU was charging down the field. With a game in their hands, the Horn Frogs set up first and 10 at the 22-yard line. What happens next? You make the call. Forgoing the rush and opting to take a shot at the end zone, TCU's offensive miscue led to an Air Force interception and later a Falcon win in overtime, keeping them undefeated on the season. Brought to you by Buffalo Wild Wings. Gary Patterson told us yesterday, Glenn, that Andy Dalton checked to a fade route last year when they were in a position to score, and it was just a redshirt freshman mistake. A young mistake. He's matured a lot more. They're, let, they're letting him go a little more now. And I'll tell you what, they're going to get the ball now, and they're going to get the wind at their back. So look for play action early, something to get the safeties up and to throw over the top. He's Glenn Parker. I'm Joe Beninati. Tim Neverett is with us on the sidelines. College football on versus Mountain West Conference style. The kick... Returned by one of the upbacks, it's Shivers, who pounds his way across the 40. Give him 18 yards on the return. There is a flag down. Number 84, 10 yard penalty. First step. Frustrate you if you're Gary Patterson. You're getting the ball at the 41, and no, you're not. You're coming back a little bit. 
And Glenn, TCU's offense was brutally efficient in the opening quarter. Now you're saying they could be even better with the wind at their back. Well, yeah, but you know what? One, one thing we know, listen, they've got the wind at their back. I think they're gonna they're gonna take their shots now. Uh, that's just what you do when you're when when you're an offensive team. But what do we also know about TCU? We always feel, at least the last few games we've been able to watch them on film or that we've covered, they always seem as if they're a play from breaking away without actually breaking away. So far, that field goal, and then they punted from their 40 where they got into the, the opposite territory. You just feel like, man, just one more play, just one more play, and they break loose. Dalton under center. Turner lowers his shoulder. Gets it close to the 20. Brandon Reeves helping out one of the linebackers to make the tackle. And Joseph Turner, a guy who runs with that hammering style. Well, you, you see the personnel group and they bring in. in. In comes Ryan Christian, a little more speed. In comes Curtis Clay, a little more speed. As expected, TCU balanced and Air Force staying on the ground a lot, play selection-wise. Tight end Frosch is there to get his hands on it across the 25. Thomas had him in his clutches at the after the gain of nine. Very efficient throw by Andy Dalton. You know, the ability, they found their tight end now three times on the same route, different edges of the formation, but it's usually to the field. It's a little field out, and it's a really nice throw by Andy Dalton. We've seen TCU three times this year on versus. Dalton's timing just gets better and better. Yeah, and, and credit, credit Mike Schultz, the offensive coordinator, with, with being his mentor and teaching him and getting him to understand the offense. Play action, Rembert coming from the corner, complete. Dalton finding Wyatt as he beat right on the move. A gain of 16, and we share time with Tim Neverett. Well, one of the things about Gary Patterson, he loves music. The guy's got over 9,000 songs downloaded into his iPod. He blasts music at practice. He said it helps with communication in a loud environment. One of his particularly favorite songs is Raise a Little Hell by Trooper. He said it's not about the title of the song, but more about the lyrics and the theme that if you don't like the way things are, do something about it. And he has his team live by that credo as well. And I'm surprised he doesn't have earplugs in because it's loud in their practice facility when they do crank that tune up. Oh, helmetless Andy Dalton as the late flag comes floating in there. Andre Morris tied him up. A pickup of five. Gary Patterson's done a wonderful coaching job this year, Glenn. Nationwide, in your estimation, who's done some of the best work? Well, other than Gary Patterson, who I think is just, he just surprises me every, every week. Play, holding on the offense number 86. Personal foul, face mask on the defense. Penalties will offset, replay first down. Other than Gary Patterson, week in and week out, and every year seems to impress me. Urban Meyer at Florida, I think, has done an incredible job. We're going to take a look at this play, and we'll see the face mask as he takes off. Just that's you're a step slow. You reach out, and oh, I don't know. I didn't see a face mask. He grabbed his helmet off, but I didn't see a face mask. But tough to be an official. But uh, I would also say Nick Saban in Alabama has done a great job besides Urban Meyer. Urban Meyer's their expectation is always tough to coach with. Um, you know, I, I, there's a lot of guys out there. Those two really jumped to my mind. Kyle Whittingham at Utah. Turner off right tackle, getting close to midfield. I know you enjoy the work that Mike Riley has produced in the Pac-10 with Oregon State. And I think he's one of the most underrated coaches out there. And people watching versus going to get a chance to watch him after our game. He's one of those guys that he lost seven guys in that defensive front. All he's done, come up and shut down USC. Did a really good job against Utah. He does a very good scheming coach. Mike Riley, underrated. Gray skies here in Fort Worth today. Corn Frogs on top of the visiting Falcons by a touchdown. With Mountain West Conference football on versus. Turner shredding tacklers inside the 35. First down yardage. Kirkhoff was the man who finally brought him to the turf after a pickup of 19. I love what TCU's done. They're, they're, they're going wide. They're getting them to run. And now they come right at him with a little bit of a draw. Look at big Giles Montgomery with that big block on the linebacker, Lamondola there. And Turner, north and south. His pads are perpendicular to the sideline. That's how you get good yardage. He doesn't have to worry about outrunning somebody. He's going to run over. Turner appears very, very fresh in that backfield. Dalton keeps it on that zone read. 
dropped at the 30. Andre Morris was the first man to say hello, along with Justin Moore, who may very well be the fastest linebacker on the Falcon team. Well, now here's here's the, a, a critical play for this offense. You're sitting here at about second and seven, and if you if you take a loss, you put yourself to where now what do you do if you don't get the first down? Whereas if you can get some positive yards here, it'll make everything much easier. This is where they stalled the last set of downs. Christian is the tailback. Straight ahead, knocked down by Lamondola, right in the middle of that linebacker formation. Tim DeRuder, the defensive coordinator for Air Force, he was saying when he popped the tape in, when he was watching film on TCU, he thought that the darn thing was in fast forward. They're fast on offense, too. It, it, well, that's how they recruit. They go out and, and one thing, just sitting there talking with, with Coach DeRuder and ca talking with Coach Cal uh, Calhoun, it, they do a really good job of, of recruiting out of position. Maybe it's a guy they grabbed that was a, a tight end in, in high school. And he becomes their tackle here. Or maybe it's a guy that's a linebacker, but he's too, maybe a step slow to be a linebacker. He becomes a great defensive end. That's what they do very well. They recruit out of position. And right now, it's been forward march against Troy Calhoun's squad. It's 10-3 TCU. Back for more in quarter number two on Versus. Falcons trying to stiffen defensively here. TCU scored on its opening possession today. They've done that a whole bunch of times this year. Now trying to add to what is a 10-3 advantage over the white jersey Falcons from the Air Force Academy. Third down situation and four. Andy Dalton barking signals from the shotgun. Christian twisting off of one tackler, inching closer to that first down yardage. Andre Morris was there to put the hit on. Going to be shy of the first down. They're sending out their team. They're not, they're not sending out the kicker. They're going for it here on fourth and one at the 23. Bringing Justin Watts, the fullback, in from the sideline. Try to try to dictate right now and break this thing open a little bit. What PC is thinking. Fourth down. Let's call it two. Better than 60 percent on the season in these situations. Turner has some space and almost was on his way to an end zone dance. Lamondola brought him down. He's the leading tackler for the Falcons after a pickup of nine. Well, oh, talk about your your play action runs. Look at this fake. Great job. What you can't see is Andy Dalton acting like he's going to pass, and that froze the linebackers for just a sec. And Turner pushing through there, north and south, understanding the read to get that. Looked a lot like a couple of passes that they've run earlier on quarterback waggle or quarterback naked. Joseph Turner was the offensive MVP of this squad last year, and he's been the MVP for most of the day today, along with Dalton, as the Falcons come to rip him down to the turf. We share time with Tim Neverick for more on these teams' practice habits. Well, we talked to Gary Patterson prior to the game about having 16 days off. He did a lot of what's called good on good, meaning the first team offense against the first team defense. They're getting a little tired of hitting one another. We're anxious to hit somebody in another jersey. For Air Force, Troy Calhoun and crew trying to take it easy on the guys at this point in the, in the year. Did not dress them in pads, just helmets and sweats from midweek on. So Wednesday afternoon until now, they hadn't hit. And coach is going on to say, Tim, Coach Calhoun, that is, he can't wait to see how good his Falcons are going to be in a bowl game. After they get a breather, after, in his words, they finally, some of the younger guys, absorb the onslaught of all their efforts at the academy. Yeah, you know, you talk about boot camp and classes that you have to go through as an academy kid. In fact, they get to go home and have some real food and sleep in a real bed. He thinks they're going to come back fresh and ready to play. Dalton. Bumping it to the outside. Dalton on his way. Touchdown with a late flag coming in. They're going to get a late hit there. A little push out of bounds. Cost him 15 yards on that kickoff, I think. They're proud of the purple in Fort Worth today. The penalty is against Air Force. Just on the kickoff. The eight-yard jaunt for Dalton puts TCU on top by two touchdowns. Well, here it is, zone read. Picks up good blocking by Shea Reagan, the tight end out there. There he is. Now there comes that little bit of a late hit. He's got to be smarter than that. And you would think Air Force kids are generally smarter than that. But passion rules sometimes. Evans to tack on the extra point. 
And that is routine for him. 17-3, Horn Frogs. Continuing their own onslaught on their own scoring record book on versus. Ted, thanks. We appreciate all your efforts at College Football Central on Versus, along with Rowan Williams today. Best seat in the house, checking out all the football action on this Saturday, as this one will result in a touchback for Air Force after the penalties were assessed. Glenn, take us through Dalton's last dash. All right, well, you're going to get play action this way. Now, I want you to pay attention right here, Brandon Reeves. When this man blocks down and these guys all block out, he sees a hole and he fights into it. That is where the killer is because the ball goes outside of it. Watch, watch Brandon Reeves get sucked into the line of scrimmage there. And then up comes the safety, and now it's too late. Nobody can come out. You've lost the corner. You've lost that edge. Two tight ends set for Air Force here and out of the eye. Jefferson keeps and launches himself to the 23. TCU with 17 points today. Another couple of touchdowns for Andy Dalton's gang, and it ties his school record. Well, it shows you how impressive that offense is. We talk defense with TCU all the time, but offense certainly getting it done. And I'll tell you, if you're looking at this side of the ball right now, what you're seeing is it's very tough for Air Force to get to where they need to be because there's always a TCU defender one step ahead. They're anticipating very well, and they're getting to the point of attack faster than Air Force is. Long way to go in this football game. But if TCU takes care of business today, they'll turn their attentions and become the biggest BYU fans on the planet. Yeah, they'd like a share of that title, that's for certain. And uh, they know they have, have to take care of business. And that's what every kid here is thinking. Just take care of business. The things we can control, we'll control. The things we can't, we won't worry about. It's been such a terrific year for the Mountain West Conference overall. It's been our pleasure on Versus to keep tabs on them. Who do you like as the play goes along here? Who do you like in that big Holy War showdown? Well, you know, I, it, that is one of those games, like any rivalry, you, you hesitate to make any predictions in. But I like the way Utah has just been winning games, whether they, they win them impressively or whether they're getting it done in the last minute, like at a, a, against an Oregon State or against a TCU. They're just seeming to find ways to win, and that's very important. Good teams do that. TCU falls into that category on top by two touchdowns over the visiting Falcons. Air Force just moved the chains for first down yardage. Travis Decker's back in the lineup for the Falcons. Big 88 at the tight end. Here comes a reverse with a pass hooked into it, and it's all interrupted by Jason Phillips. Jason Phillips fed into the game, uh, fed into his hole. He fitted in well, and once the pitch was made, he didn't change course. He said, you know what? I'm going after the ball. It's exactly what you do. If you get snookered, you just keep coming. Because if you have indecisive, you'll get beat. Phillips knows what's coming because he was an option quarterback in high school. <laughs> He's know, seen right. all this stuff before. He has seen it all. And in the words of his coaches, seen it all and done it all. A brilliant career on a senior day in Fort Worth. Again, the Horn Frogs defense gives nothing up the middle. Cody James Moore. Bess and Cody Moore inside. I'll tell you what, both of those guys, you just mentioned them, and I was on talking about Cody Moore, those guys. The two inside tackles for TCU don't get the love of the Panthills and the Hughes and the Phillips, but they are determining where that ball goes. Big time play out of those guys. There's big Cody Moore right there. So important, the play of those space eaters. And that's right. You know, it, it, the one thing is we love to mention a number or a name when they make a tackle, but so often a guy like a Vess or like a Moore, who are sitting inside, eating up blockers. They're making it possible for everybody else to get out there and make plays, like a Henson, one of the top linebackers for TCU or anywhere in the Mountain West. They're making those plays possible. And when they do... Tuesdays and go. Thursdays, Glenn. I can tell you about this. Versus stirring the soup with a new original series, Sports Soup, hosted by comedian Matt Eisman, featuring the week's best highlights, lowlights, everything in between, covering the coverage we are with a hilarious show that sports writes. Sports Soup, all new, every Tuesday and Thursday, 10 Eastern, right here on Versus. The athletes do their best to avoid being in the soup. Tim Jefferson wrestled to the earth by Matt Panfield. Another senior who wants to show off today. 
and show off of what they're doing. You know, one thing you have to admire, though, out of TCU with all their speed, they're not they're not jumping around and celebrating. They're just getting right back to the line of playing. Look at the speed. Panfield plays off a block, comes in. You see Jerry, another one, Jerry Hughes, full speed coming from the backside. So uh, a great pursuit, good angles, a lot of anticipation so far of the TCU defense. Harrison pulls double duty at Air Force Academy. He's the place kicker and the punter. Nick Sanders drops back deep in purple. And Andy Dalton touchdown run. And Luke Shivers touchdown run. And a 17-3 advantage for the Horned Frogs if you're just tuning in with us for college football on versus. This one end over end. Trouble there as they fight for it on the turf. Sanders had some issues once the ball struck a Horn Frog. TCU says they've got it, and the officials agree. Officiating crew led this afternoon by Scott Novak. Well, this ball bounces, and I think maybe Sanders thought it hit one of his men, but then he tried to pick it up, and as he was picking it up, he looked upfield rather than securing the ball. Ball went right through his hands to the ground, and now it's a free-for-all, but they do get it back. Dangerous play by Nick Sanders. You know, he's a senior, or junior, excuse me. He's been around a lot. He's played three years of football for, for Coach Patterson. Can't make those mistakes, especially on special teams where so many things revolve around that ball. Last time we were here for college football on versus, Sanders had a big day, a couple of picks of Max Hall and the BYU Cougars as TCU throttled BYU at the time. First and 10 for Dalton, he'll throw. Wind at his back. Wide open. As the route opens up, Jimmy Young says thank you very much. Well, an it's inside route. Three, Glenn. Excuse me, Joe. An inside route. You, you run. You run a go on the outside, a cross on the inside to come back to the outside, and it comes wide open for Andy Dalton. Look at. There was nobody in that picture other than him. He had all day to throw. Take a look here. He sits. He sits. He waits for the man to come into the open. Now, not many quarterbacks get a chance to do that. You generally have to anticipate. But he had so much time, he could simply sit and wait. Scouting reports say Young's getting better depth on his routes. Dalton on a quarterback keep. Lost his footing there around the 35. Type of plays that frustrate a, a coach, for sure. You've got to draw, and you think you've got some open run in space, and instead you, you kind of lose your footing and fall down and cost yourself yards. Dalton already with a rushing touchdown. Now with five wide receivers at his disposal. Crossing route, Christian. Swarmed at the 15. First down yardage for the Horn Frogs. Thomas was the first man to put a hat on him. Well, they bring guys from, what they do is do a nice job here. Top of the screen. You got a cross underneath and then a dig by the guy that was running the go. So what he does is he runs go, cross underneath him, and then he runs dig into the, the void left by the safety coming up. Great job, well-designed play. Two tight end set. Dalton gets flushed out and cut down. These two teams are both sack happy, and there it's Ken Lamondola who picked up his first career sack last week against BYU and obviously liked the taste of it. Just over a minute with which to work in the first half with college football on versus as you see the timeouts remaining for these two squads. What I love is during the timeouts, the whole offense goes over to the side to talk to Gary Patterson, the guys, and then who's out there? Those offensive linemen. They, see, they don't want to go any further. They don't want to be over the sideline. That's a long way over there. Could serve your energy. That's right. The only guy that had come over, maybe the, maybe the left tackle who's closest to the sideline right now, he might come over. Maybe they wanted to talk to him. The coaches said, hey, come here. The rest of the guys get to and say, you go. You go. You're closest. I say this kiddingly, of course. There's no pizza over on the sideline yet. <laughs> That's right. Uh, they're not stupid. They don't, want to, they don't want to run over there, waste their energy. Quarterback's going to tell them what the play is. Don't worry. They'll figure it out. Bart Johnson, Ryan Christian, Walter Bryant to the wide side of the formation on second down and 16. Dalton scans and fires. Touchdown, Bart Johnson. Well, you got three wide receivers on that side of the field. You got a couple of out routes. You get one crossing route back under, and that gives you the seam route wide open for that score. 
Andy Dalton put it right where it had to be. And the Horn Frogs are perfect in the red zone this afternoon, something Gary Patterson was almost demanding that they would be against the Falcons today. Evans for the extra point try. He got it. And it's 24 to 3 as the sirens sound at Carter Stadium. Well, let's get a look at it. You see, you've got three receivers. Actually, it's four. You've got a slot, two here, one here. You're going to get out routes and crossing routes so that the seam route comes open right here. The safety can't decide where to go. There comes the seam right down that hash mark, the score to Bart Johnson. Really well designed play by Mike Schultz. Understanding that when you have one out route and one crossing route back under or, or a dig, that your safety is caught in no man's land, and that will allow speed up the seam into that indecision. It's a very nice throw by Andy Dalton. The 22-yard reception capping the 55-yard drive, and we're just over a minute away from the Craftsman Halftime Report we're on College Football Central on Versus. Mark Johnson, who had a 52-yard catch the last game in that uh, disappointing loss in Salt Lake City, gets himself on the board. Kickoff specialist Drew Combs was born with a left arm that ends just below the elbow. He doesn't hesitate, though, to get in there on tackles. Well, that's part of football. Got to get in and play. No, out there, no one cares what a handicap you might have. And he doesn't care either. He wants to just get in and play football. Rembert from the five. A 15-yard return. TCU has had a terrific season. And offensively, this will go down as one of the very best as they set the mark for most touchdowns. Well, there you have it. And that, that tells you so much about this team. When we, we talk so much about defense, yet it's that offense setting records and quietly going about their business. That's the exact way most offenses would like it. Just, just let us score points. Let us get off the field. Let them talk about something else. Last couple of times, Gary Patterson's teams have had, what, 15, 16 days to get ready for squads. They have done some serious damage. New Mexico most recently. And beating Air Force today by three scores. Coming up to make the play, Coleman from his safety position. Well, you know, what, what you've got there is Coleman understanding where the ball wants to go, where the quarterback going with it, and flying up to make a play. Coleman leads this squad in interceptions. Senior from nearby Dallas, Texas, after the loss of three. Now, Gary Patterson, I think, telling these guys, be very careful of play action pass here. At second and 12, not a lot of running plays are open, so be very careful of the deep ball. Tim Jefferson out of the gun. Fumble. Ball free. Great hands. And Clark got back to make the play. Defensive end Jerry Hughes almost was able to pass that ball to himself. Yeah, you know, this is where if you're a coach, you're, you're stomping yourself because you're like, don't try to pick up the ball. Just fall on the ball. Give us a chance to score with our offense. But end of the half here. See there, exchange problem. Now everybody's trying and kicking it and punching it and doing what they can as we come to the halftime. But... Boy, you'd like him to have fallen on it three seconds earlier, maybe, and have one snap, maybe, if you had it. Asher Clark recovers as the first half comes to its conclusion. The one that uh, served the purple-clad Horn Frogs very, very well with all the musical accompaniment that goes with a senior day. Their seniors are showing off. Well, they're showing off, and I'll tell you what, For an, let's talk about that offense. You know, the defense certainly played well, but offensively they had the ball at their own 16 and their own 12, and they've managed to get 10 points on those two drives. So they're doing really nice things offensively. Before we go back to college football central on versus, we are going to hear from Gary Patterson. We will do that right now. He's with our Tim Neverett. All right, Coach, defensively, things went very well that first half. Yeah, we had one play. I didn't get a good call in the secondary, and they had us uh, on the edge. Besides that, we played very well. Pretty happy with the offensive effort? I am. You know, we, we, we're, we haven't scored 35 points uh, today to be the all-time scoring team in the nation. A lot of our defense gets a lot of credit, but our offense has played awful good this year. Two quarters to go for your seniors here at home. What do you tell these guys at the half? I said, don't let up. We're going to keep on the accelerator. I stood on the field last year down there and then had class, so we're, we're going we're to get ready to play at our own house. we got one more half to play. Gary, thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Joe? 
Gentlemen, thank you. Ted Robinson, Roland Williams coming up after the break. It'll be the Craftsman Halftime Report from College Football Central on Versus. Big first half for the Horn Frogs. They've got the lead 24 to three. Craftsman Halftime after the break. Last time Air Force was in Fort Worth, it was Fisher DeBerry's last game as the head coach of the Falcons. Troy Calhoun bringing Air Force Academy into Carter Stadium today. And TCU has the advantage 24-3 after the first half. Joe Beninati and Glenn Parker with you. And Glenn, look at these numbers. They are one-sided. Well, they certainly are, but that's the way the game's been. TCU has been better offensively. They've been better defensively. They've played with passion. Uh, you're starting to see from Air Force the youth that they are, the, 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 how young a team they are for Troy Calhoun. Let's check in with Tim Neverett. He had the chance to catch up with Troy Calhoun, and he made some notes. Yeah, Joe, and I asked him about TCU's defense. I said, Coach, they're real tough on you. He says, oh, yeah, again, 54-yard rush by Asher Clark has been their only rushing yards at this point in time. He said they need to get off the field on third down. They need to try to create some opportunities, so look for them to try to create more opportunities here in the second half. I also asked him, what was the message to the team? He said, they have to play Air Force football. He said, we're a very good football team, but we can play a lot better than we're showing today. Thank you, Tim. Drew Combs' his boot settles into the arms of Rembert at the 7. He drives it across the 20, close to the 23. 16, 17 yards on the return. Darrell Washington made the tackle for TCU, and Washington will be the, the next great linebacker here at TCU. Tim Jefferson trots out from the sideline and the quarterback comparison in the opening half favored Andy Dalton big time. Yeah, I, I don't know if it favored or Andy Dalton was the only quarterback on the field when you look at those numbers, but remember, Tim Jefferson, freshman, and they're a running team, not a passing team. Asher Clark gets it going, galloping to the 30, picking up close to six, where Stephen Coleman dropped him in concert with Robert Henson. Now, the first drive of the third quarter, always the most important for your team, whether that's offense or defense. Uh, and so very important for Air Force. They're coming out very quick. No huddle. See where they go. Staggering information right there. One play for 54, and the rest practically nil. It's seemingly like that. As uh, Henson enveloped the ball carrier again, Phillips is always around the pack. These two guys on senior day making their last impressions on the faithful here in Fort Worth who have fallen in love with them year after year. As well they should. Uh, Henson, Phillips, these guys playing great football, have for years. And I think you might see uh, Henson at the next level, the way he looks. Air Force wanted a lot of third in shorts today. Asher Clark trying to push it. Their goal was to average three and a half yards on the ground. That's a tall order against TCU. Well, it looks like they came up just short, but uh, appears they're going to go for it here. No, they gave him the first down. Excuse me. They hadn't changed the yard, the uh, down marker for me. Just getting going in quarter number three. Joe Beninati, Glenn Parker upstairs, Tim Neverett working the sidelines. Falcons again trying to spring the fullback. Todd Newell has uh, had a steady diet of James Vess and friends today. Well, and that's the thing. They like that. They like to run the fullback because that everything comes off of that. So if you can get the fullback run, that means you can run your option then, and you can run a lot more. If you can stop that, you can stop a big portion of that offense. Vess is a true team leader for this squad. Again, they give you that option look as Jefferson rides it into the belly of the fullback. Jared, too, a sophomore from the state of Utah. Vess is really the only D lineman who played that position in high school. You were referring to all the athletes they recruit to TCU and then convert them to different positions. Vess stayed true to his high school colors. Yeah, they, they got lucky. They found a guy they didn't have to move around. But, uh, well, there's a huge third down for Air Force. First position at third quarter. they got to get something going here. D coordinator Bumpus there. We got a quick look at him. He molds this group so well. Jefferson to throw. Into the flat, in and out of the hands of Jared, too. It falls incomplete. And that's what kills you. You have a chance to convert that third down there, put the ball right on your on your on the hands of your fullback, and the ball drops. Now you're forced to punt and give the ball back to your team, going with the wind that's already put 24 points up on you. We have not seen much of Jeremy Curley, if at all, today, bothered by a groin muscle injury. So Nick Sanders, 20 in the purple, drops back deep. 
Harrison today, the punter for the Falcons, averaging 45 yards per boot. This one into a breeze. Sanders got clipped, knocked down, and this one will trickle and be touched down just inside the 30. Now that most important thing I said about the first drive of the third quarter goes for TCU as well. Doesn't look good there for Ryan Harrison as he hobbles to the sideline. We'll carry on with more on Versus in a moment. TCU's offense back on the field. They flex their muscles in the opening half. They're on top of Air Force 24 to 3. Mountain West Conference schedule coming to its conclusion today. All eyes on this one and then eventually all eyes to BYU and Utah. And as they decide the Mountain West Conference champion today, it could be one or it could be three. As we look at Andy Dalton's afternoon, very effective. Yeah, it certainly is. Right on rhythm, lots of time to throw the ball, lots of real estate, really good routes by his receivers. And then when he's run, he's run effectively because of good blocking and also because of the design of the play. So Andy Dalton getting things done across the board, whether it's throwing, whether it's running, and finding guys wide open all over the place today. Two tight end set, Aaron Brown's a tailback. And it is Brown slicing off the right side, cut down by Lamondola. Six times Lamondola's had 10 plus tackles in a game this year. The future's very bright for him. Andy Dalton, you compare his redshirt freshman performance against the Falcons with this one, shaping up to be a little bit better. Yeah, the, the big one there is that the, the interceptions. Uh, without interceptions, you control the tempo and the pace, and you don't give them a chance, and that just shows the smarts. That was Gary Patterson's lament yesterday. The three INTs, the fumble in the red zone. TCU lost in overtime to Air Force. Dalton showing good touch there. Connecting with Christian over the middle. All right, Christian running the dig route from the outside position. Once again, they like to have two levels, one under, one over. And Andy Dalton a really good job of throwing the ball over the first level into that second void and getting big yards. Triple header with college football on versus today. Harvard killed Yale last year, 37-6. Beat them 10-0 in the game this year. Geno Gordon was outstanding. And once we are through, it's Arizona and Oregon State. You don't want to move from versus today. Dalton on first and 10. Off the hands of the tight end, Reagan. It falls incomplete. Chris Thomas was in the vicinity, as always. You can see right here, Gary Patterson, Mike Schultz, the offensive coordinator, they want to put points on the board on this drive. Talk about the importance of the first drive of the third quarter for both teams. TCU's got the ball. Right now they're in good field position. They've been moving. They want to get another score. They don't want Air Force having any life. They remember last year. They remember what Air Force is capable of. They don't give up at Air Force. They're going to keep fighting. Falcons overcame a 14-point deficit in the fourth quarter a season ago. Turner crashing and banging his way inside of Air Force territory. That run gave you a good idea as to why Turner is a straight ahead runner and not an outside runner. Not, not the niftiest of runners. He got himself some yards. But he wants to go north and south. That's what Turner is. He's a, a shoulder pads upfield kind of guy. And you see that he struggles a little bit outside trying to get away from guys. Turner feeling much better after that concussion he suffered against UNLV. Third down, let's call it six. Dalton out of the gun. Lofting this one. On target, beautifully timed for Jimmy Young. Using his leaping ability to scale over Reggie Rembert. Well, there's a flag on the play. Going to get a little interference on the defense there. I'll tell you what, that was a great catch by Jimmy Young, but I don't believe the ball could have been Pass thrown any better. On a defense, hey, penalties decline. First down. When you watch this, this is a go route. He's going to step and go to the outside. Now, this is pretty decent coverage all the way across. That ball, back shoulder, probably could not have been thrown any better. If it goes over, it's too long. Just the nature of the beast. Coming under, great job by adjusting to the ball for Jimmy Young. Coming back on it. And get that interference call gets, gets to be waved off with a big-time first down for GCU. 27 yards on the pickup. Tim DeRuiter, the Falcon defensive coordinator, said his corners right and Rembert won't back down but they have to go above and beyond today in their matchups with the Horn Frogs off the play action there's a wide open pass for the touchdown Waltz Walter Bryant from Andy Dalton with a little sleight of hand yeah and really nice
nice job by Andy Dalton. Really nice route running out top. Once again, putting safeties into no man's land with a underneath route, and over the top route. Mike Schultz designed a very good and effective offense to fight this Air Force D. A 22 yard connection, and the Horn Frog fans are loving it in Fort Worth. Evans extra point try is right down the middle and TCU is bloodying Air Force today early on in this third quarter Andy Dalton pulls up and finds Walter Bryant the rest is easy with college football on versus one three for the Horn Frogs an uplifting performance for them with college football on versus Walter Bryant, the last man to tiptoe into the end zone to improve TCU's advantage. Warzika and Rembert stand deep to return for the Falcons. They could use a big play here, and that's a big play guy, Reggie Rembert. Yeah, Reggie Rembert's capable of breaking it. They just got to get the blocking up front right. Ball's going to be going with the wind here, so it's going to be a deep kick. You know that much. Drew Cohn, straight on kicker. Rembert from the five. Finds a little crack, keeps his balance, and dives across the 30, a 25-yard return as we revisit that last touchdown. Dalton with a nice pull-up here. Love the design of this play. What you're going to get is this route will come up and cross. That puts pressure on here. Now, this is Brian in motion. He comes here and right up the sideline. The pressure's on that safety. He has to make a decision. Really well-designed play. There's Walter Bryan in motion. He comes around. Now he's up the sideline. Safety was in no man's land. Didn't know what to do. Really nice design by Mike Schultz for that touchdown. Everything clicking for the guys in purple. Air Force staying on the ground. Jason Phillips is there to, to chop down the ball carrier of the freshman Asher Clark. All those youngsters at times last week against BYU, there were as many as seven freshmen on the field. The coaches are saying, you know, I'm glad I didn't realize that at the time because I would have been more scared. Yeah, but it also gives you hope if you're an Air Force coach because you've got all those guys coming back that are just going to mature and get to be better and better players for you. Jefferson on the pitch. Good catch there by Clark as he's hustled down again. Hodge coming and running. Stephen Hodge who can neutralize a lead blocker, can make a tackle in the open field as we check in with Tim Neverett. Well, defensive end Jerry Hughes is all the talk around here in Fort Worth. Earlier this week, he was named one of five finalists for the Bronco Nagurski Trophy that honors the nation's best defensive player. See the other four finalists up there. Hughes leads the nation in sacks with 14. He needs three to tie the TCU record of 17 set in 2003 by Bo Schobel. The 14 sacks he's got now are already a Mountain West record. Tim, with that list, you can win some football games if you could assemble them all together. Woo. Some talented people there. Yeah, and I've had the opportunity to watch Ray Malaluga in person, and he flies around the ball. Jerry Hughes, seen him now many times, and he is just a talent. He's right on par with the rest of those guys. TCU's defense is doing it again today among the national leaders in so many different categories. They are forcing Harrison to punt again. It's his fifth time. As this one settles. Sanders makes the catch. There's a flag down as once again, Brian Harrison is uh, on his wallet. Now, the last time, a little something around his ankles, he fell down, and this time he's on the ground again, and there's a flag. We'll see what they're, see if it's running into or roughing. Officials today, led by referee Scott Novak. Troy Calhoun told our Tim Nevert, we need to play a little bit more Air Force Academy football in the second half. None too pleased with the way things transpired in the first running into the kicker on a defense five-yard penalty from the previous spot replay fourth down so it was fourth and seven here we're going to look at it here so, you know he's up off his feet really nice job of acting it appears tyler latrell does he get him no i don't think so well if he got Did him he got his him? one leg um boy it'd be tough I have to see that again that you know what, though? Throughout this uh, this fall, our college football viewers on versus, they know you're an offensive lineman. You're not a kicker. Well, but you also got to remember, kickers are very close to soccer players, so they're used to taking dives and flopping around a lot. Fourth and short, 
Air Force at the line of scrimmage. Tim Jefferson under center. Keeps gets collared and knocked down. Robert Henson, a past winner of the Fighting is Frog Award, is all pumped up today. Well, <laughs> Henson is, he's a dangerous combination. He's size and speed. And you're going to watch him come inside out. Here he comes. Inside out, does a good job, gets up a little high. Maybe a stronger quarterback breaks that tackle. Doesn't matter. Gets him down. Stops him short of that first down, and now you've got a great job, place for your offense to take over the ball. A half a dozen tackles for Henson. We saw Gary Patterson there for a moment. He rates this defense very, very highly with the ones that he's coached in Fort Worth. Dalton flushed. Escapes once, but not the second time. Wrestle down. I like the thought process. Quick change. We're going to go Holding deep. On the offense, number 61. Penalties decline. Second down. Robert Henson pretty fired up after that stop on fourth down. Clapping his hands, getting fired up. How you oh, like me, Coach? Oh, getting co Coach Patterson getting involved. How you like me now, Coach? He sits. Well-deserved break for that defense. But I, going back to the offense, I'll tell you what, I like the fact that Mike Schultz said, hey, quick change. We just get the ball on a fourth down turnover. We're throwing the ball. We're going deep. Now they get, the, get a holding call, and that hurts them. Off the snap here on second and a bunch. It's going to be third and about a mile. Andy Dalton diving to cover it up. At the top of this telecast, we build it as strength against strength. Air Force's rushing attack against TCU's vaunted D. There is not a happy man. You're right about that. We build it. The rushing attack against the D. The D is just killing him. Out comes your offense who played so well. Gary Patterson's losing his mind. They come out first and 10 from the plus 39. They are now third, and I can't count that high, from the minus 37. They backed up 24 yards in the process. Andy Dalton on the quarterback draw. Gets it across the 45. Justin Moore was there to trip him up. It's a pickup of eight. Coach Patterson will teach his team a lesson all week. He'll say, you know what, in a bowl game, this will get us beat. Against the team when we're not up 31 to 3, that'll get us beat. He'll use that as a teaching tool all year. The rest of this season and into next, I guarantee you. TCU into play today, 9 and 2. Losses to Oklahoma and Utah, both on the road in Norman and in Salt Lake City, respectively. Kelton hammers this one. Rembert inside is five. Reggie Rembert is in a heap of trouble, and down he goes. They'll mark it at the two. Well, Reggie Rembert is old enough to know better. Don't feel that punt, let it go into the end zone. 58 yards on the boot. The Falcons start for their own three when we return with college football on versus. Such a healthy glow on those faces, and TCU has a healthy lead against Air Force today, 31-3. These Falcons have won their conference rushing title 10 straight years, but they're pinned deep in their own territory right now. Asher Clark straight ahead. Phillips got in there along with Coleman. Well, now because of what you did on the punt, where you took you fielded the ball on your own three, you're forced now to simply try to salvage field position and, and punt. And and yeah, they'd love to get a first down here, but what they have to do is make sure that the exchange is correct and don't lose yards and don't turn the ball over. It just it, it just compounds itself. All of that with a freshman at quarterback, Tim Jefferson. Coming off tackle, Clark surrounded. Washington's close by. T.J. Johnson. Guys get there quickly on this TCU team, and it's happened all season long as one of the Falcons stays down. I think that's Todd Newell. I can't quite see the number. Could be 2-5, and it is, and if it is, Todd almost changed his jersey number because of all the injuries he's had in the past, and specifically a bad knee injury in the past. But he went to a priest, had the number blessed, and he's had one whale of a season. Well, all right. Um, yeah, he has had a great season. I, I don't know about the, the blessing of the jersey, but we'll see what happens here. He gets leg whipped into oh. the back of his left leg and goes down. Now, 
Uh, we'll have to wait and see what happened as far as the, the, the seriousness of the injury. Now, you might look and see that he has tattoos on his leg. Now, in the, in the days prior to now, when so many people do have tattoos in the service academy, if you had had a tattoo coming in, they would have made you remove it. Nowadays, you can have them upon entering, but you may not get one while you're in the academy. So they, they've, they've liberalized their policies a little bit. But I know some people are probably wondering, we've all seen officer and a gentleman can't have tattoos, right, if you're going to be an officer. Well, I was down there talking with some of the coaches, and they, they informed me that nowadays, uh, if you're entering the academy with a tattoo, that's fine, but you can't get it anymore while you're there. Todd Newell, the senior, in need of assistance to get to the sideline. He rushed for 134 yards against UNLV as he gets a, a warm hand here at Carter Stadium. It had been seven seasons since an Air Force Falcon fullback picked up that kind of rushing total. He's been the everyday starter for this team. He shares something else with you in common. A love of In-N-Out Burgers. Oh, boy. Any I knew I'd get a smile. Anybody on, on the West Coast knows In-N-Out Burger. Folks, coming up next, Pac-10 Primetime Showdown. 21st ranked Oregon State trying to keep their Rose Bowl hopes intact. They take on the Arizona Wildcats versus college football. It's wild out here. That is going to be a, a great game to watch. Two teams, one playing for its first Rose Bowl, one playing to secure its to, to secure a better bowl bid in its first bowl season in 10 years. So both teams with a lot to play for. Very fired up to secure their position within the Pac-10. Newell helped to the sideline. Arizona, third straight time they've welcomed a nationally ranked team to Arizona Stadium. Wildcats this year are 4-1 and one there. 31-3, TCU has a comfortable margin in its Mountain West Conference finale with Air Force. Jefferson off the play action. Into the flat for the big tight end. Uh, Hodge says, uh, sit down, Travis Decker. Well, what that showed you about Hodge, it's the speed to close the gap. It's the strength to take down a tight end. Incredible. Get the little naked going. You'll see the tight end right out in the flat. It, ball's delivered. Hodge wraps up, grabs single leg takedown. That's a wrestling move. Easy MMA guy. Hard to argue with the talent of TCU safeties the last few years. Brian Bonner, David Roach, Marvin White, Stephen Hodge, and they just keep coming. Gary Patterson tells us about a great recruiting class. This punt hangs into the air. Ryan Harrison again had company on that boot. Running into the kicker. On a defense, number 43, five-yard penalty, first down. Well, we'll get a look at it, see if he actually hits him this time. Well, he came down, he, he got under him where he was coming down. Coach Patterson thought he was going to get the ball at the 36-yard line. Instead, his defense is out there. Tell you what, this is, this is the perfect game if you're a coach. You win fairly big and convincingly. Your guys play as hard for you as they can play, but they've had enough mistakes that you get a lot to coach on in the next couple of weeks. You get to kick some tail That's a little right. bit. That's right. Tank Carter was the man upon whom Ryan Harrison landed, and Carter can appreciate the, the travails of a punter. He was a quarterback, a fullback, a tailback, a linebacker, a place kicker, and a punter in high school. That's a lot of hats to wear. I guess so. Jefferson's pass. Just falling incomplete. He was looking for his uh, fullback, Jared, too. Well, I'll tell you, the speed of that TCUD, there was one receiver and four defenders. Now, he's somewhat open if the ball's delivered over, but you see all the, the purple shirts around that guy. They're everywhere. Raphael Priest just got a hand up to disrupt that pass. Second and ten for the Falcons, just over four minutes to go in the third with college football on versus today. Joe Beninati, Glenn Parker, Tim Nevert, your announced team. Three cheers for all the men and women in our technical crew. From Carter Stadium in Fort Worth, where the Falcons stay grounded. Two oh. powering ahead, and Hughes winds up on his back. If I live anywhere in the Metroplex area, I'm giving up on other football, and I'm going to watch TCU. A lot of speed. Got kids that seem to get it. A coach that understands how to win. Man, this is the place to come if you're in this area. Just a terrific four-year run. 
Many of those fans in the stands are, I'm sure, seniors today themselves, saluting some of the greats on TCU who have a good chance to win their 40th ball game today. Jefferson settles, zips it too high, intended for Josh Cousins. I'll tell you, you know, the thing about that play is you saw the youth of, of Tim Jefferson. He stepped forward to throw the ball. When you do that, that's why the ball sails, because your back leg is not underneath you. It's in front of you, so that ball goes high, and that's just youthful exuberance. Clay Hendricks said they will work on mechanics with him in the spring. Well, there you go. That's exactly what that was, was mechanics. Fourth and eight. Into the wind again. And Sanders will kneel with a fair catch. And TCU will have a short field and a 31-3 lead as we look at Lowe's building towards the BCS with those the top 10 teams in Mountain West, Utah, represented at seven. Well, they're right there. If they can get past BYU and the Holy War, obviously they're going to probably get into a BCS game, which is huge for them. You know, when you look at the top, you can look at Texas Tech playing Oklahoma tonight. That is a, a huge matchup. But I really think in that group, Florida's the best team right now in the country. And you say they're on a collision course with Alabama. I think it'll come down to a game against Alabama. I think Florida will beat them handedly. I don't think it'll even be close, to tell you the truth. Dalton running for another 11 to his totals. Reggie Rembert gets the tackle. Rembert began the year playing on both sides of the football, but he, he has not played offense since uh, the end of week two. Well, you know, the thing about Reggie Rembert, a little bit undersized for where he's at, but he plays special teams. He'll, he'll return for you. He'll play defense. But, you know, the, what he does is speak to the uh, Air Force Academy type kid. Willing to do whatever it takes to help your team win. Turner inside. Tracked down by Luke Yeager, who knifed in there from the secondary after a gain of three. Air Force came into this ball game unbeaten on the road this year, trying to be just the second team in school history to go unblemished away from home. And Troy Calhoun said it. With what these guys are working for and learning about potential conflicts in the future, you want them to be undefeated on the road all the time. That's, yeah, that's absolutely right. That's what he told us. And, uh, you know, he understands their mission in life is... Football is fun, and it's a great way to go through school, but that is not what life is about. Right now, though, we are watching TCU dissect a very good, very capable Air Force defense. Yeah, it, speed, number one. Uh, having a lead in the game certainly helps. Uh, they came out with a great game plan against this defense. and In meetings this week and talking with Mike Schultz, you got the feeling he, he had something, that he knew what he was doing. And from the get-go, we've watched them do a great job of spreading the field to attack vertically then. They spread them out, then they come back hard up the middle. Trying to negate some of the speed of that team and trying to get them out of their pattern of zone blitz, voiding and, and putting some holes in the defense. Really nice job today so far by Mike Schultz. Aaron Brown dancing with it there. Jaeger made the tackle. Luke Jaeger, his brother Jake, plays at Navy. Very solid tackler, a senior on the back end for the Falcons. Just about 90 seconds left in this third quarter with college football on versus today. Mountain West Conference action right now. Pac-10 action coming up to follow after the big game in the Ivy League. As a completion is made to Young, Rembert rolls him up. The TCU is back in business again, first and goal. Randy Dalton finds a quick out route to Jimmy Young here, and you know, the thing is, what they're using is using their put pressure on the defense by the, the defense has to has to give them a cushion. When you do that, there's a lot of giveaway ground. Fantastic season for Young, over 900 yards receiving. He's got catches in 16 of his last 17 outings, going back a year ago. Andy Dalton scans the defense. Dalton loves that keeper, and he jogs in for the score from seven. Zone read is all it is. Keep an eye on the defensive end and make the right read and you get a score. And Andy Dalton getting much more comfortable at the quarterback's position than he was last year. That's for certain there, Joe. There was one stretch, Glenn, where he had rushing touchdowns in seven straight. Oklahoma put that to an end. But Dalton's been in the end zone a couple times today. 
And TCU is thrashing the Air Force Academy. Blocked. Evans' point after was rejected. Remember, this can be two points if it goes back. It won't because of the uh, hard work of Evan Frosch. 37-3 for TCU. One of three teams in the Mountain West Conference ranked in the top 20. The Horn Frogs having themselves Gary. a day. They're having themselves a day because they're capitalizing on mistakes of Air Force. They're using, when they get field position, they're doing something with it. I'll tell you what, oh, you want to go back. Gary Patterson's not happy. You, you get a, P, a PAT block. It's all those little things. I, you know what, I, and I, I want to again stress, he's not happy, but he's really happy. It gives him something to coach up in the next few weeks. Depending upon which bowl game they go to, he said it's almost like we get preseason again to put the guys through their conditioning paces. And those seniors thought that they were finished with what they called the Colorado weightlifting drill. Well, they may see it again. They might and have again. to do it again and again. Yeah. If, as, a, as a senior, you do it in the offseason, you think, boy, I'm finally done with that one. Get to a bowl game, and if you have enough time, if you're in one of those bowl games at the end of December into January, well, now you've got enough time. You've got a lot of practices there. Guess what? Those drills are coming back. He loves to brag about this Mountain West Conference. Three teams ranked in the top 20 in the national polls for the fifth straight week. TCU, BYU, and Utah. Those latter two flashing head-to-head -head in Salt Lake City today. That will be a thriller for sure. Well, it's a, it's a, he's got great reason to brag about that co this conference. Warzika brings it across the 20 as we send you down to field level to hear about an injury report from Tim Neverett. All right, thanks, Joe. Todd Newell, the fullback, will not be coming back. They're saying it's a sprained left ankle at this point in time. He's icing it on the sideline, and he is expected to be finished. But just getting started is Texas native Shea Smith, the senior quarterback, is going to come out on this drive. He's been warming up on the sideline. He's out of Odessa Permian. If that high school sounds familiar to you, that's the high school that the movie and the book originally written by Buzz Bissinger, Friday Night Lights, was based on. In fact, in the movie Friday Night Lights, they used some of Smith's game footage. He actually appeared a little bit in the movie, and he's appearing in the game here in his home state. Well, they need about 10 booby miles then. A little booby miles action as Lozica takes it on the reverse play. Oh. Sturdy shoulder thrown at him. T.J. Johnson with a teeth-rattling hit. Showed good strength, Warzika did there. One tackle and getting a couple extra yards. He's a guy, you know, the thing about Warzika, he's a guy that kind of snuck up on us a few times. You didn't hear about him, didn't see him, didn't, never saw him on film. All of a sudden, he's he's getting some plays in the, in the game, and, and you, you start to see why they like him. Jay Smith in it, quarterback. Glenn, you and Tim did that to... Air Force Navy game in which Shea took ill and Tim Jefferson came on and really started uh, his stretch of taking the job away from from this senior. Well, you know, unfortunately, as we come to the end of the quarter, Shea Smith is, just doesn't have that suddenness that Tim Jefferson has. Suddenness is the word. The word of the day. 37-3 all of a sudden for TCU on versus. Looks like they're about to bump off Air Force as we get this fourth quarter going. Scoreboard divvied up into thirds for you. It started swiftly for TCU, and they have not looked back. No, they they came out right off the bat. They did exactly what they needed offensively, spread the field, attack vertically when they could, and then defensively, they were always anticipated and were in the right spot at the right time. So Air Force, a long road to here. They start off by getting the first down. Very nice throw to Travis Decker. Jay Smith is on for the uh, freshman starter, Tim Jefferson. First back through, grabs another eight. It's Kyle Lumpkin on the carry. Lumpkin who lost his starting job to Asher Clark. You know, I'm a firm believer in you're never out of a game. And 
Uh, you know, I, I, I was a member of the team in the NFL that had the great comeback, and I just, I don't believe in giving up. Hello, Jared, too. Forget catching him. It's a touchdown of 57 yards in one sprint. Jared, too, who busted free for 19 against BYU last week, goes the route against the Horn Frogs. Jerry Patterson is livid. He's, we saw him there. He's going up and down telling people that's what we get. You see, we get a little lazy. He's not happy. He likes his defensive rankings. He doesn't want to give up the big run like that. It takes, good, it takes a lot of pride in the way his defense plays. And to give up a play like that in a game you have in hand, he is not happy. Here's the middle. Just give it to your fullback. Great job by two. One cut to the right, and he is gone and off and running. Jerry Hughes shows why he's an All-American, though, and a Bronco Nagurski trophy, uh, trophy finalist. He's, he's right there hustling for him the whole way. He's not giving up either. Two huge plays offensively for the Falcons in what has been a limited offensive day. You think back to that long jaunt of Asher Clark in the opening half, and then Jared, too, all the way for the score from 57. This Air Force team with 10 points on the board. They've gone 193 games without being shut out. you got to go way back to 92 to find the last time a team blanked him. It was Mississippi. It won't be TCU today. Now Troy Calhoun checks the scoreboard, sees he's down by four scores, and I would imagine there's going to be some uh, trickiness coming up pretty soon. Here. Yeah, you, you got 14 minutes to go. You, I don't know if it's here or if it's the next time if you score, but he's got to he's he's going to pull out some stops. Ryan Harrison, who's perfect on point afters this year, ready to hit it. Hodge is one of the deep men. Do it all performer. For the Horn Frogs. This one comes in over end to Aaron Brown from the 15. Lightning quick returner. Brown scampers to the 39 yard line, picks up 24 on the return. One minute into quarter number four. Andy Dalton going to stay in there. TCU with its 37 today, putting up a new school record. How many times are we going to say a new record? Today we've talked about Andy Dalton and this offense and the defense. Seems like every every time something happens on the field, they're putting up something new in the annals of TCU history. Horn Frogs keeping it on the ground. <clears throat> Brown was trapped by Luke Yeager. Glenn, in the aftermath of their disappointing loss, that heartbreaker in Salt Lake City to Utah, there was a, I guess I could call it a rogue online report that Gary Patterson was going to coach another school. He put that to bed as quickly as possible. There are some terrific jobs out there, though, aren't there? Well, there really are. I mean, you know, Tennessee, obviously, is the one that comes to mind, and you wonder who will take that, an SEC school with a proud tradition. Obviously, Washington in the Pac-10. Uh, you know, the, the academics might be a little tough, but it's a, it's a good-paying job in a top conference with a lot of history behind it. So there's some jobs out there. Now it's just a matter of coaches to decide to take on the challenge. Tennessee, not quite the challenge that Washington has been, but uh, there's a lot more out there and others coming up. Obviously, New Mexico in the Mountain West. Another tough job for someone to come in and, and try to make a difference. Gary Patterson said he would miss Rocky Long on the sideline in, the, in those uh, coaches' meetings, too, in the conferences in the Mountain West. Uh, straightforward. What you see is what you get from Rocky. Yeah, and he always had a smile and laughed a little bit, and that's one thing I think that a lot of coaches are going to miss. He told it like it was. On third and short, the connection to Young. Jimmy Young breaks loose. This uh, TCU squad, a very prime job for Gary Patterson, especially with the kind of talent he brings into Fort Worth. All you want as a chance as a coach is to have a 50-50 chance to win all your games. And uh, TCU gives me that. And I think that's what you want. And now, you know, you just keep building on it. And I think this recruiting class uh, really kind of shows that maybe we're making progress as far as on a national scene, and especially in Texas, that people are understanding that TCU has something to offer maybe other schools don't have, no matter what conference they come from. Aaron Brown gets outside, and Glenn, you know, Gary goes on to say, people don't realize how good a job this TCU one is in its own right with the things that they're doing here in Fort Worth. All you have to do is look at the end of the stadium with that new addition they put on there, and, 
and some of the plans they have moving forward. They've got a, a, a wonderful practice facility in the academic areas. There's a great picture of that addition. There's club seats up there. There's an academic area. There's places for the students. It is, it is top-notch, as good as any facility in the country, and I've been to a lot of them, and across the board in the Mountain West, there's some good ones, but this one ups the arms race considerably. Second and six for the Horn Frogs. Play action. Dalton down the middle and too strong over the head of his intended target, Shea Reagan. Luke Yeager was running there in coverage again. I think it might be time to see the second quarterback if I'm a TCU fan. I got 11 minutes to go. I got Andy Dalton still in the game. I'm just not so sure that uh, I don't take him out and put in Marcus Jackson. I, uh, <laughs> I I don't want my guy hurt going into the next the bowl game or next season. That's just the way I think. I think I've got it in hand right now. Mountain West Conference is going to be very well situated for bowl appearances to come with as many as six different squads perhaps being bowl eligible. Dalton for Reagan. Tracked down again by Jaeger. After a gain of six, let's have a peek at the possible bowl situation for the Mountain West Conference. Well, you look at the New Mexico Bowl. Obviously, the Las Vegas Bowl is a great one to go to as well. Both of those on the same day. And then, you know, there's not a bad bowl in that group if you're a Mountain West team. Now, they could easily match up against a Pac-10 team in the Las Vegas Bowl. If somehow TCU got to that game, they'd be playing a pretty good Pac-10 team that I think they would match up very well against. Spinning, whirling dervish there is Justin Watts, the fullback. It's been a, a season full of great stories in the Mountain West Conference, and one of those includes Colorado State, which won again today, picking up its sixth victory. Quite a turnaround. What a great story up in, uh, you know, in Fort Collins. Steve Fairchild's done such a good job. His first year turnaround, around. They're 6-6. Six and six. They're bowl eligible now. That's one of those storylines that will not get enough play in my book across the country. People need to see what he's done. If UNLV joins them, it would be the second time in Mountain West history six teams have been bowl eligible. The only other time back in 03. It's the 10th anniversary of this conference. Dalton throws a strike for Curtis Clay. Well, they're really attacking the seam, and what they're doing is with an outside route that puts the safety in a bind. Does he, does he go out, or does he protect that seam? And, you know, it's just a matter of what comes open. Andy Dalton comes and looks. He looks right there. It's, it's one look to the outside, then come back on that seam route. Curtis Clay, a sophomore, a walk-on. He and Joseph Turner are cousins. Another 22-yard hookup for Dalton. I checked the uh, media guide. Uh, Mr. Clay wants to be a sportscaster. Look out. Dalton looking for his third trip to the end zone, and it's not given to him just yet. Wrestling him to the earth was the... Uh, Linebacker Andre Morris took a got slung to the ground there. Give a look here. He's got the option. He wants the touchdown himself. He looks like he's going to pitch. Holds off one moment. Well played across the board by Air Force. They were in every gap, just like you're supposed to be. Be in the gaps. Be at the point of attack before the ball gets there. Second and goal. TCU says touchdown. And now the officials agree for Justin Watts. Shivers got one in the first half, and now they throw some raw meat Justin Watts' way. A good blocking up front by that offensive line all day. They don't get enough credit, that's for sure. Marcus Can, Giles Montgomery, Blake Schluter. These guys are getting it done. Take a look at that surge by that offensive line. Get down, leverage, get under people. That's why the back and get across with that ball. A lot of big wide bodies there pushing hard. An exceptional offensive season for TCU continues. Attacking 44 points on Troy Calhoun's Falcons. TCU in control. Just over nine to go on versus. For most of the first half, it was a pretty gray day in Fort Worth, but the sun has broken through in the last hour. Temperatures in the 50s, and the band played on. 44-10 for TCU, defending its home turf against the Air Force Academy Falcons. Drew Combs, the kickoff specialist. That the left arm ends just below the elbow, born that way. Straight on kicker, old school. Warzika 
a Chad Hall type player running for daylight and Greg McCoy tracks him down folks Tuesdays and Thursdays versus is stirring the soup with new original series sports soup hosted by comedian Matt Eisman it features the week's best highlights lowlights and everything in between we're covering the coverage with a hilarious show that sports writes sports soup Thursdays 10 Eastern and Tuesdays Thursdays the days on the calendar to mark it down well, the officials are gonna tell us what this flag was I think there was is no foul mask. for face mask it was a grasp and release first down for Air Force it was a grasp and release he didn't pull down is that a, a fishing term <laughs> catch and release, catch and release no, yeah. or? well remember there used to be the two and now there's not so it's thank you for the clarification okay. he said he got it and he let go so we're not gonna call you like you on those barbecued ribs last night. Oh, I, I wasn't letting go. Air Force, not a big day offensively. Most of those yards coming on two running plays. And no pun intended, one of those from Jared, too. Number 42 definitely plays off that name very well. You play any musical instruments, Glenn? No, I do not. Jared plays the drums, and I'm very envious. They, uh, unfortunately, don't have much talent for this one. Jay Smith was hit as he throws, and nearly an acrobatic catch for Warzika as he broke loose from Sanders. And when I play a mean, you know, shower singer, <laughs> pretty good there. Thank goodness I haven't heard that. Or seen it, I'm sure. <laughs> Woo! Well, you get their threat, this defense so much speed, they're always around the ball, they're hawking after it, and Washington right in the face. Right in the face of Shea Smith there to cause that ball to get out at the wrong angle. Almost halfway home in this fourth quarter. Third down and long for the Falcons. Smith to throw. He got nailed again. And this one will fall incomplete with a flag in the backfield. Darrell Washington knows how to pierce an offensive line and put heat on a quarterback. Setting fouls up play, personal foul, face mask, pulling face mask number 57 of the offense, pass interference, defense number 20. Penalties will offset, third down. Do it all over again. Nick Charles, Gary Patterson says he's as good as anybody in the conference at his position. Well, he got his right hand on the face mask and then throws down the defensive lineman there. And Obviously, you can't throw him down if you're going to get your hand up there. You got to get it out. Some would say you get it up there, get it out, get it up there, get it out, get it up there, get it out. <laughs> that way you stop the charge. But you got to get it off and don't throw him down. So that's what he's called for. And then goes offset. Decibel level rising on third and eight. Here they come on the blitz. Smith knew he was going to pay for that. As uh, it's broken up by T.J. Johnson. Stephen Hodge was targeting the ribs of the quarterback, Smith. Well, now, the last few times there's been uh, running into the kicker. So at the very last punt, Patterson didn't send anybody. Didn't, didn't rush it. Didn't want to run into him again. Let's see if they stay by that or they try to get after this one. Brandon Geyer coming in to punt. Ryan Harrison is the everyday punter. With the wind at his back, Geyer gets this one to drag its tail a bit, and Sanders says, fair catch. After the 37-yard kick, we exit Carter Stadium for a moment. We're back after these words on Versus. Old Mr. Sun starting to set in the sky over... Carter Stadium here in Fort Worth, Texas, the home of the TCU Horned Frogs. The team ranked in the top 20 in the land. The team gunning for win number 10. On senior day, it's turned out to be a crystal clear day in the Lone Star State. Horned Frogs with the ball and Marcus Jackson in a quarterback. And Marcus Jackson shown the door very quickly. 
Rick Ricketts made the tackle. We bring in Tim Neverett for, for a discussion, and Glenn, I know you're going to sink your teeth into this as well, regarding the, the BCS, the bowl situation, and a potential college playoff. Yeah, guys, in case you hadn't noticed, we had a presidential election recently, and uh, President-elect Barack Obama went on national television saying that he's going to throw his weight around to try to influence uh, folks into forcing a playoff on the NCAA. Since then, Congressmen from Utah, Idaho, and Hawaii have also thrown the, their hats into the ring, looking for a wave of support here. We'll pick it up after the play. A running play for Jackson to sprint and get chopped down by Brandon Reeves. Continue, Tim. And, and again, I think what they're missing is a lot of people like to blame the NCAA for this. And, it, and, and honestly, it has nothing to do with that. It's the college president's who are the ones who vote on this, and, and that's, the, that's the group of people that really need to be convinced that there needs to be a playoff. But the way the BCS system is and the bowl system is currently and the cash that that generates for the automatic qualifying schools and then possibly this year one automatic qualifying, uh, non-automatic qualifier, it, it would almost appear likely that Barack Obama would have a better chance of stopping wars and fixing the slumping economy than he would instituting a playoff. Yeah, Tim, thank you. That's what I was going to say is the point they're missing isn't who decides this. The point they're missing is that Barack Obama was elected on a platform of change, and change means let's fix this economy and figure out what's going on in the world. I don't think anybody – it's it's like the steroid scandal. Why, I don't understand why Congress needs to get involved at all. Well, uh, and we're seeing Congress people from – states that have teams that play football in the WAC and of course in the Mountain West uh, with uh, with Utah with Jim Matheson the Democrat from Utah being one of those involved in trying to create a wave of support and we can understand why people would want to play off and certain sports fan wouldn't want it but the way the thing is set up it's it's highly unlikely it'll happen well thank you Tim and I think I think the uh, you're absolutely right everybody would like a playoff but once again I just go back to aren't there more important things for the Congress and the president talk about that's where I go. I mean, really, it's it's wonderful that they're throwing their hat in the ring and we all want to play off. But I look at the problems with our country right now. and I don't think it's college football is a major problem. Politics and athletics so rarely mix. <laughs> Thank you for pointing that out. This recent discussion doing just the same. President elect Obama was asked. Yes, about absolutely. His he gave an answer to an, a question. Yeah, I, I and. I don't want to, I'm not pinning a, a picture or, or, or to use broad strokes here, but really, come on. I think he knows what's uh, high on his priority yeah. list. I'm quite certain he does. Option, Kavnis. Quick cutter getting to the outside. Jay Kavnis is a cousin of a pro football Hall of Famer named Thurman Thomas. I think you might remember him, Glenn. I do remember Thurman. I was at his Hall of Fame induction ceremony. One of the better, if not the best back. In NFL history and you helped pave the way for him for seven years I helped pave the way for Thurman Thomas and he might say I helped get in his way and keep him from getting more yards because I was a little slow but I was out there I was part of it all just over five minutes to go in the fourth that little sweetie if she's rooting for TCU she's happy it's 44 10 with college football on versus a big day a triple header day Harvard beat Yale TCU is about to polish off Air Force and then we can all sink our teeth into Oregon State and Arizona from the Pac-10. Between now and then, a little college football central on versus with Ted and Roland. First up. Oh, big Spencer Thompson coming in, playing at the left tackle spot. Gets a little anxious. He's got a first down and 10. He's in the game. He doesn't get to play all that much right now. and Just jumped a little bit. I can understand that. Being antsy? Well, you know, he's a big guy. He's moving backwards. What he did is he jumped into pass pro. So... He's got a guy who's a better athlete than him, who can see the ball, who can move forward, and he's a big guy who slows got to move back. No wonder he's answering. First and 15. Jackson, full sprint down the sideline, and then he'll jog out of bounds. As we send you back to college football, Central on versus, here's Ted. Hello. That they are. That they are. And it was interesting to hear Roland Williams back at College Football Central on Versus during the Craftsman Halftime Report say he's confident that Rich Rodriguez will bring the right people in to make Michigan a winner again someday. Well, I, you know, it's not like he suddenly forgot how to coach. He came to a program that didn't have the players for his type of system, and so he's got to find those players. Marcus Jackson fumbles it out of bounds. It'll still be TCU ball. Reggie Rembert put a, a helmet on him. 
Just over three minutes and change to go in this fourth quarter. Glenn, I know you and Tim are very much looking forward to next week on Versus, the Civil War, Oregon and Oregon State. I wanted to uh, say some special thanks to the terrific members of our technical crew who've been with us, traveling with us throughout the Mountain West Conference schedule. Those guys, they're the unseen, unheard heroes. We're very, very much in their debt. And gentlemen, your friendship is greatly appreciated as this is uh, my last go around with you and Tim. And it's been an impressive showing for TCU from cover to cover. That it has. And, you know, and thank you, Joe. Uh, we'll move forward. Tim and I will do next week's game. But uh, we've had a couple of great years here. We look forward to well, next season, what it holds for us in the Mountain West. Very much a year for the Mountain West Conference to celebrate. So many excellent stories. TCU among the top headline grabbers. About to go to 10-2. Just over three minutes to go, and Glenn, how about the Mountain West Conference? Take us through some of the, the big names and perhaps the best performances. Well, I think when we look at our players of the year, Max Hall at BYU really stepping up and becoming a leader of that offense. And right here in this game, Jerry Hughes, TCU, just a phenomenal defensive player in the Mountain West. Special teams, of course, Louis the King Sakota up in Utah. That guy, it just gets it done. How often is a punter kicker the most popular guy on campus? Kyle Whittingham, expectations were high, and he's met them to this point. But I could name several coaches of the year within the Mountain West. And then Steve Fairchild at Colorado State, what a story. Getting him to bowl eligibility in his first year from such a horrible year that they had last year. Pretty similar script to that of Troy Calhoun on the Air Force sideline with respect to Fairchild. Coming back to his alma mater at Colorado State, having a lot of NFL uh, experience on his resume, and now quickly turning a program in the right direction. Yeah, you know, and, and so much of it, I, I, it's hard to say what it is that gets it done, but I think a lot of it sometimes is just the work ethic, being able to communicate with the kids. I mean, Troy Calhoun came into Air Force and automatically understood what they were going through. He'd been through it. Steve Fairchild, he played football. He gets it. He's been there. He know he understands the trials and tribulations of being at Fort Collins. So there's a there's an identifying factor there for those guys. TCU keeping it on the ground. Less than two minutes to go in the fourth. 44-10 on top of Air Force. About to pick up their fifth win in the all-time series between these two Mountain West Conference rivals. TCU last year has a. Gary Patterson is about to get wet. Oh, boy, that's it's, cold. It's brisk there. out there. Season ago, they finished eight and five. They beat Houston in the Texas Bowl. They'll await their bowl assignment. And Coach Patterson gets to bring him back in the classroom, get him in shape for a little postseason play. Cavness tracked down and spun to the earth. Justin Moore there. Final minute of this one. And then once they're through, they'll find a way to see Utah and BYU and wonder out loud, TCU, if they can get a three-way sliver of a Mountain West Conference crown. They need BYU to go in there and beat the Utes. Yeah, and they would love that, of course. I mean, having beaten BYU, they'd feel... I mean, it just capped this season even more for them. They got so many good kids. And then they'll find out what bowl it is that they're going to get to go to. And well, you take a look at the records they set today. Big time day for the offense and defense at TCU. Jackson will keep it on the ground. Not going to pull the trigger on another pass. Hunter Altman, who does a terrific impression of former coach Fisher DeBerry, a real prankster. Making that tackle in the final 12 ticks to come. TCU with Jerry Hughes. He's really what would you call the, the tip of the sword for their defense. Ultra impressive again today. Yeah, a speed guy. He plays with leverage. He's got motor. Then, you know, but this whole defense is like that. I mean, Robert Henson is, is a real emotional leader. Jason Phillips always where he's got to be. We talked about the inside, too. We didn't give enough love to the secondary, even because they were playing Air Force, who doesn't throw the ball a lot. But when they did, they were in possession, in, in position, and made plays they had to make. Final play from scrimmage. Air Force coming to Fort Worth, trying to trip up Gary Patterson and the Horn Frogs, and TCU, with better than two weeks to prepare, upholds its end of the bargain and wins convincingly.
Well, senior day and, and, a, and a really special group of guys for Coach Patterson and all they've accomplished. And, uh, they came out and showed why they, they, they belong in the discussion of top teams and, and rankings and, and where they fit. They, uh, they certainly have put it together today, that's for sure. They can beat you in so many ways, and they were shining examples of that this afternoon on Versus. Here in the Lone Star State, the pride of TCU shining through today. 44-10, they down the Air Force Academy Falcons. And we look at the Mountain West Conference standings up to the minute. Andy Dalton's day was very, very good and earns TCU another victory. Yeah, and possibly a slice of the pie. BYU can beat Utah. TCU in a three-way tie for the, the conference lead. Air Force, not shabby. Came in, very talented team, just couldn't put it together today. Back to the quarterback, Dalton, who is reading the game and the situation so very well right now, whether it's through the air or on the ground himself. Well, that's right. You know, he, the zone read, and he gets out, and he makes great blocking, but makes the play. His Today, throwing the ball, dictating to the defense what he wanted to do. Not simply wanting to sit back and let it happen. That's what's so impressive. Andy Dalton with a big day today. The Falcons should be congratulated on an 8-4 and four season. They're bowl eligible. Glenn, some thoughts on those who wear the purple and specifically on the defensive side of the ball. How justified are the rankings that they carry? They carry enormous accolades with them. How deserved are they? Well, I think their defense it might be deserving of a higher ranking than it gets. And I know it's number one in many categories. But I've watched them against too much competition. They're too, they're so fast. They are really, really talented. Underrated, baby. For Glenn Parker, for Tim Nebert, for all the men and women in our crew, Joe Beninati, thanking you for your time. Coming up next, College Football Central, the studio show on versus, followed by Oregon State hosting Arizona. Big day for those who wear the purple. 44-10, they, they win. Back to College Football Central on versus 10 and rolling.